Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I've been lucky enough to be asked to review It Took an Apocalypse, the new sophomore album from friends of the channel and all-around kick-ass band, Crimson Riot. If you're not familiar with the band, they are Roxy Gunn on lead vocals and guitar, Chris Reject on lead vocals and bass, Ryan Hammond on backup vocals and drums. Currently holding the record for my longest, and possibly drunkest, interview, I can't wait to get them back in my kitchen. In the meantime, we'll all have to settle for letting them live rent-free in our heads. With equal parts uplifting messages and an attitude of, I don't give a f what you think, this album is a marked step up from their first offering, Classy Punk for Trashy People. Let's get into it. The first song on the album is You Kill Me, kicking things off with a solid riff by Roxy Gunn. There's an immediate feeling of a more intense songwriting style here than previous efforts. With lyrics like, it's getting closer, it's in my grasp, I feel it now, I know what I want and I'll get what I'm after, the listener is aware that the band's message is serious and crystal clear. Things are different now, don't jerk us around. A straight ahead rocker, this tune sets the stage very nicely for what promises to be a solid follow-up album. Song number two is Political Identity, with Chris jumping in on lead vocals for the first time on this album. This one's a little more lighthearted with a humorous yet topical and serious message of inclusiveness and acceptance. The best part is when he sings, it's not about who's won or lost, agree to disagree, but at what cost. This line makes a great point about the ongoing political battles that people embroil themselves in while losing sight of the problems their chosen party and candidates were supposed to be tackling. This makes the song a lot deeper than I originally thought, and it makes it that much more enjoyable. Plus, it's a solid bop. That's what the kids call it, right? In the words of Monty Python, and now for something completely different. The album takes a hard left with St. James Gate, inspired apparently by traditional Irish drinking songs. Starting appropriately slow and solemn, all while taking the piss out of rocky mountain waters and the beer made from them, there's even a proper Irish tin whistle. Knowing the band's affinity for Jameson Irish whiskey, this made me yearn to toss a few back with them once again. I didn't realize their love for Guinness, however. Maybe I should stock up on that too. Song number four, Girl Fight, takes things back up a notch with a riff straight out of Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good before diving into another awesome rocker. With a message of frustration at female issues common in the rock and music venue world, this song is short and to the point. Roxy Gunn and Women Everywhere are sick to death of these apron strings, and all they want is the respect they deserve. Not to mention, it'd be nice if you Shut up and pay me! Starting off a little bit like St. James Gate before kicking off into a slow, ska-like track, complete with horns, the fifth song is If the Shoe Fits. Chris takes up the lead vocal duties again here, singing about well-worn punk and ska topics like equality and love for each other with lyrics like, How can you hate what you don't know? How can you love what you don't show? A nice touch is a jump into double time, which gives the song a shot of adrenaline, something many slow ska and punk songs lose in their attempt to get their message heard. Track number six is Gatekeeper, and like one of my favorite songs, not punk enough from their first album, this one's another anthem for those of us who dare to like something without following the dress code. Unlike not punk enough, however, this one's sung by Roxy instead of Chris. Either way, the message is clear with lyrics like, I didn't realize this culture was taken, and I want to know who died and left you the key, and while we're at it, who made you the fashion police? There's also effective and well-used voiceover parts about punk rock that further drive the point home that all music, but especially punk rock music, should be open to everyone and anyone to enjoy any way they see fit. Just a quick aside about this. I belong to a Facebook group called The Whiskey Tribe, whose number one rule is this. The best whiskey is the whiskey you like to drink the way you like to drink it. I feel this applies to music as well, especially given Crimson Riot's affinity for both whiskey and music. Okay, back to the review. The album continues with Poisoned Mind, an endearing rock and roll love song from Roxy to her husband Chris, I'm assuming. Yeah, he's the bassist. Her dad's the drummer too. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. It's a nice glimpse into the dynamics of a relationship from someone who deals with intrusive thoughts and feelings of inadequacy. 
Like the lyrics say, part of me might not agree, because I don't see what you see in me. At least, that's what I got out of it. Song number eight is Maybe It's You, which immediately reminded me a little of music by Bare Naked Ladies for some reason. Anywho, changing the topic from romance to an ex-romance, this song seems to be all about that moment when someone from your past reaches out and wants to try again, when what they really need is to look in a mirror and figure out what needs to change. Short and sweet, there isn't much more to say about this song. The message is pretty clear. Pull your head out and get your life together. Moving on to the ninth song, Time, the conversation changes again to a familiar topic. Life is short, so hang on to your friends. Less punk and more folk song, this track recalls good times with those that have passed away. A great reminder to hang on to those closest to you and have a drink for those you miss. Chris singing lead is back, and the punk is back, with Tom Urban, the ultimate tribute song to the ultimate fan. And why not? Tom works hard, then gets in the front row at every show, and even was in a video. I mean, I was in one of their videos too, you know. Anyway, it's a quick, energetic, funny, and awesome nod to the fans. Not to mention a nice change from more serious messages addressed on this album. We should all aspire to be like Tom. The second to last song on the album is riddled with a whole lot of oys, so what do they call it? The oy song, of course. Another fun ode to the scene and hanging out with their friends, this tune just demands a sing-along by the crowd with their drinks held high. Short and quick, it's a nice mini-anthem for all live music fans. The album finishes with Shatter, a nice cross-section of the rest of the album. We get a little bit of Roxy Gun Project and a little bit of Crimson Ride in this one, with vocal harmonies and more traditional rock phrasing. The song is actually about unrequited love, with lyrics like, How can you say that I'm your world when you're building galaxies inside your mind tonight? I know the feeling, guys. <laughs> As a last song on the album, it's also a departure from the themes of most of the rest of the uh, tracks. I'm okay with that, however, because it's well written, and the chorus is infectious. Overall, It Took an Apocalypse is another solid album from Crimson Riot, only turned up to 11 with a noticeable upgrade in production quality and overall song content. It's obvious that Roxy and the boys have taken their time crafting this, and it shows. I'm so proud to call them Room 6 alumni, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for the future. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some Jameson with my name on it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that you'll click the link down in the description to get your own copy of It Took an Apocalypse, the full-length album from Crimson Riot. If you want to follow them anywhere else, there are links in the description. If you want to reach out to me to get either a review or an interview or just ask me any questions you have or offer any ideas for, you know, new videos, the link is in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider going to room6.shop and picking up some merch. I designed it all myself. Quite proud of the new designs. Um, or go to patreon.com forward slash room6. Become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and you get all sorts of perks, including a monthly patron-only Patreon podcast called Two Brains, One Bottle. With myself and Sean Flume, we talk about whatever we want for an hour, and it's unfiltered, it's unedited, and we just have a blast, and I think you will too. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please click down here and don't forget to ring the bell. It really does make a difference if you subscribe, guys, and please feel free to like and share. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.